Hi, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and in this video we're going to be talking about how to use the AstroView 90mm refractor from Orion Telescopes. Uh, it's a 90mm refractor, good for moon and planets, uh, some of the brighter deep sky views, as well as just some general daytime viewing out the window. Uh, I'm going to assume that you've uh, watched the setup video or gone through the manual and set it up and gotten it to this configuration. However, saying that, I'm going to go over two parts of the setup that are very critical to using the telescope. Polar aligning and then aligning the finder scope. So let's get started. The first thing to do is to polar align the telescope. If the telescope is not aligned, then when you're using these slow motion knobs here, it's not going to move in the direction you want it to move. It just makes it very difficult to use the scope to follow something, uh, especially at high power when you're looking at a planet. So the, the basic gist of it is this axis here, this is the right ascension axis, that has to be pointing towards Polaris. So if I was to draw a straight line up this way, uh, it would end in the star Polaris. So obviously the first thing you have to do is find the North Star. Uh, we have various uh, accessories to do that. We've got smartphone um, software, we've got a star chart. Find Polaris and aim this axis northwards, true north, not magnetic north. And that, that's going to tell you that Polaris is directly in front of you in that direction. Then you've got to get the height of this axis. And you can adjust that up and down by using this knob here on the side. This is the latitude adjustment bolt. What you've got to first do is unlock this large locking bolt that unlocks that latitude axis. And then you can use this knob here to raise and lower the scope on the latitude axis. So the first thing you got to do, obviously, is find your latitude. Uh, you can look it up on a map. Uh, if you have a smartphone, the compass will tell you. Uh, here in the San Jose, Cupertino, San Francisco Bay Area, we're at 37 point something degrees. So I'll just adjust this until the pointer here is showing 38 degrees. I'm going to say it's right about there. Once that's done, you lock that bolt back down, and you don't move it again. All right, now that the mount is polar aligned, you're not going to touch this axis again. You can still move the telescope wherever you want. If you loosen the right ascension and declination lock knobs, notice I can move the scope east to west in this axis and north and south in this axis, but the polar scope, polar alignment uh, uh, axis still stays pointing at Polaris. So if I wanted to point it south, I just move the telescope over like this. This is south over this way. Uh, if I wanted to go east, west, I can point to any direction in the sky without moving the polar axis and uh, ruining your polar alignment. The telescope comes with two eyepieces, and the, the eyepieces are what give you the different magnifications. Um, you've got a 25 millimeter here and a 10 millimeter. The lower the number, the higher the power. It's kind of the opposite of what you think. So your 25 is the low power, wide field of view and the 10 millimeter is the high magnification. So the rule of thumb is always start with the low power. Start with your 25 millimeter. That gives you, like I said, a nice wide field of view. It makes it easy to find things in the night sky. Uh, I think you'll find that a lot of objects look best at the lower power. So start with a 25, uh, use the finder scope. Let's say you're gonna look at Jupiter. Get it centered in the finder scope. Uh, as long as your finder is well aligned, like we showed you earlier, then you'll see it in the eyepiece itself. Maybe not dead center, but some are pretty close. Use the slow motion knobs on the telescope to get it exactly centered. And then you'll find that the 25 is a little too low power to really see the detail on the surface of Jupiter. So you pull the 25 millimeter out, pop the 10 millimeter in, lock it back down. Uh, use the focus knob here to get a nice sharp focus. And now at this magnification, Jupiter is starting to look really good. You should be able to see uh, at least easily the, the moons around Jupiter as well as a cloud band or two across the surface. Many people think that higher power is better and lower power is not as good, but it really doesn't work that way. There's different objects in the sky that are different sizes that work better at specific magnifications. So I already showed you that a planet is going to look best at the higher power because it's very small. But let's say you're looking at some big, large, deep sky object like the Orion Nebula. Uh, well, a 90 millimeter refractor is bright enough, or it sucks in enough light to see some of those brighter nebulae. So Orion would be a very good target. But you don't want high power for that. You think you would because it's a lot further away than a planet is, but it's very faint and it's actually very big in the sky. It spans a much larger area in the sky than a planet does. Um, 
Uh, for instance, if you could see the Orion Nebula with your naked eye, you could overlay a couple of full moons across it, and it would uh, then cover it. So it's, it's very large in the sky. It's like two degrees. So your 25 millimeter eyepiece is best for that. You step back, you get a nice wide field of view, and most importantly, at lower power, you get a brighter image. So when you're looking at these faint deep sky objects, uh, you, the more light, the better. You'll see more detail in the object itself. When you're pointing to something in the sky, you want to use the mount itself to move the telescope around, but you've got to be sure that you're using the right knobs and the right lock knobs. The first thing is to move it manually. You need to unlock the right ascension lock knob and the declination lock knob. You don't want to move the telescope by hand when those are locked down. That can damage the gears. So unlock those, and then you can move the telescope by hand in whatever direction you want. So let's say you're getting it close to Jupiter. Let's say Jupiter's right about there. Lock it down now, both directions. Then you move to the slow motion knobs, and you can fine tune the positioning by twisting one of these knobs. That's east to west, and then the knob up here is north to south. So while you're looking through the finder scope, you can fine tune the position by twisting these knobs. These are okay to do when the uh, lock knobs are, are clamped down. In fact, that's the only way they work. You just don't want to move the scope by hand uh, while these are locked down. So the telescope collects the light, the eyepiece does the magnifying, and the telescope comes with two eyepieces, a low and a medium high power eyepiece. Now there's all sorts of accessories you can get to enhance the view. So let's say you've started with a 25 millimeter, you've got Jupiter in there, unlock it, unlock the uh, set screws, put in the high power eyepiece, refocus, and you're now uh, almost three times as close. You can still do more magnification than that if you want. So let's say you're looking at Jupiter and you just want to get even closer. You can get an optional accessory called a Barlow lens. This is a nice accessory to have for any telescope because it doubles the magnification of the eyepiece that you use with it. So since the scope comes with two eyepieces, you now, by buying one Barlow, you have two different magnifications. You've got the 25 millimeter doubled, and then here you've got the 10 millimeter doubled. So it essentially turns the 10 into a 5 and gets you up to about the highest power that this scope can comfortably do. Another nice accessory to have with a telescope like this is a moon filter. Uh, the moon is a very interesting object to look up close. You can see craters, mountain ranges, uh, all sorts of nice fine detail. But I think you'll find with a telescope like this, it can get pretty bright. A moon filter is designed to thread onto the bottom of the eyepiece here. And it just knocks down the light. It's like going outside on a really bright sunny day without sunglasses. It's pretty uncomfortable. There's a lot of glare. So the moon filter cuts down that glare, gives you more detail and more contrast. Uh, a very nice accessory to have when you're looking at the moon. All right, so there you have it. Those are some tips and techniques for uh, using the AstroView 90mm refractor, getting the best out of it, and, and how the scope functions itself. Uh, I think you'll find that it's a very nice telescope, great for lunar and planetary detail, and then bright enough for even some of the, uh, the brighter deep sky objects like the Orion Nebula, Andromeda Galaxy, and, and a bunch of other things. All right, well, thank you very much. Clear skies.